in and watch it later. Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing this series of webinars for nigh on two years now. And one of my early on guests was Dr. Sybil Molay, and she is back, which I am so excited about to talk about equitaping. So welcome, Sybil. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, Wendy, to be to be with you. So yeah, it's great. I'm very happy. So um, for those who may not have watched your previous webinars, can you just give us a little bit of your background? Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, I am a vet. I live in the north of Italy. And um, well, actually, I'm a boarded specialist in uh, sports medicine and rehab at the American College. Um, my main thing is taping since now over, than, over 10 years. I have been developing um, the taping program for equines with Dr. Kenzo Kaze, who is the inventor of the human tape. And I'm using it a lot together with other manual techniques like myofascial release, um, mobilization, manipulations. Um, I like very much using the pads, but my practice is mainly racehorse based. So, I mean, they're kind of rushing everything. So sometimes you do not really have the time to take the, I mean, let the horses have their choices and relax on the pads. When I can, I love to use it. Um, I'm using a lot uh, laser therapy. I like it very much. And it's kind of quicker than the pads most of the time to reach the results. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, uh, I mean, the racehorse business is, uh, it has to be effective in the shortest time ever. Yeah. But the good thing is uh, in the different stables I'm working with, we are now having an approach that is less all of joint injections and it's more functional uh, pain relief through different techniques so it's kind of changing a bit the way things are usually dealt uh, and i think it's a good thing for animal welfare that's awesome so that's a bit of my background are you working with uh, uh thoroughbred racehorses or standard trotters or both uh, mostly trotters but uh i'm also having some a couple of um uh thoroughbreds stables and then obviously saddle horses. I mean, uh, mostly dressage and show jumping. So right. it's, a, it's a big of everything. Right. Well, I'm sure that keeps it interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. And so uh, today we're going to talk about taping. I, I believe you have a PowerPoint. I've made you co-host. Yes. So I'm trying to see if it works. Okay, just a second, because I just changed my computer and obviously I need to, um, okay, to unlock, see if it works. Okay, now it should be working. We didn't check that and I didn't think about it. That's okay, take your time. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why it, does not allow me to share my screen. I think it's because, um, let me see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, I just need to get out and get back in. Okay. Because it, 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 be it's, a, it's the privacy things that were not unlocked. So it's the Mac, the Apple thing. So okay. I'm just going to get out and come back in. Great. I'll keep everybody entertained while you're gone. All right. So if um, anybody has uh, any questions or comments they want to make while we're waiting for Dr. Molay to come back, just pop them in the chat. It's always great to see everybody. Um, who comes on these webinars and um, it's, we've got, uh, oh, she's back. That didn't take long at all. Okay, now it should oh, be working. I have work. to make a co-host probably now again. Uh, yep, make co-host. Okay. Yeah, now it's working. Awesome. Sorry, it's okay. the first time I'm <laughs> using the screen share with this new computer. So this is where it, 
happens that we had a surprise. <laughs> okay, let me move you here. Right, so I'm going to talk to you about kinesiology taping. And then I just added a little thing that is combining the use of taping and the pads since we are here hosted by Wendy and it's nice to combine and, and see those two things. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, what is kinesiology taping? Because there are different type of taping that are available, athletic taping, which is rigid, uh, McConnell taping. So kinesiology taping is something very specific that was invented in the late 70s, beginning of the 80s by Dr. Kenzo Kase, who is a Japanese chiropractor. Um, and the first applications in horses started, I, I would say quite a lot later because it took something around 20 years to translate the use in humans to the use in uh, horses and now more recently also dogs. Mm. Taping is made of um, 95 to 100% elastic cotton that is stretching only along its longitudinal axis. And that's what makes it really different from other type of taping because it is, it is allowing the full range of motion of joints and muscles where you apply it. It is not medicated, which is important from a doping perspective when you are using it on horses. It is, the fabric is also breathable so that it can stay on for more than like two, three, five days. Whereas other type of taping, they have to be removed after a few hours because they do not allow the skin to breathe. The idea behind the development of, um, of the taping from Dr. Kaze was to, in some sort, keep his hand on the patients in between the treatments. So this is why he wanted something that as, as the chiropractic treatments or acupuncture, whatever type of manual treatment you're using is based on promoting the body's healing mechanism. That's the same also for taping. And it's kind of working together with th those different manual treatments in a way that it um, furthers the mobilization, manipulations, whatever type of treatment you've been doing. Uh, in the market, there are a certain number of brands that are available. And despite the fact that they might be slightly different in how they are produced, they all share a similar mechanism of action. So what's the proposed mechanism of action? The first and probably the easiest one to understand is what we call the embryology approach. So think that this is a picture of an embryo and uh, it's made of three layers that are the ectoderm, uh, mesoderm and endoderm. And what's interesting is that the brain and the skin are developing in the future uh, organism from that same layer, which means that whatever you are applying to the skin is in direct connection with the brain. And this is important because whatever type of application you are using with the tape, it is it has to communicate with the brain because it works through the stimulation of the skin to reach the different effects. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. Then there is a second concept that's very important with taping is what they call the convolution concepts. So convolutions are those, uh, I hope that you see my pointer here, are those little wrinkles that sometimes, not always, but most of the time appear in the tape. When they do not appear, we say that there are in any case microconvolutions that work that are related <clears throat> to the elasticity of the tape that moves the skin. And these convolutions are creating the space between the skin and the underlying layers. So the fascia, the muscles, and down even sometimes to the bones and um, cartilage. 
Another important me proposed mechanism of action is uh, related to the sensory motor cortex communication. What does that mean? Is that if you are applying your tape on the skin, like on the horse's croup here, it's going to send some messages to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord up to the brain. And all these sensitive messages that are traveling upwards are going to elicit, uh, I would say, a modified motor response. This is why when we are applying the tape, we are able to interfere with neuromotor control. We can relax the muscles, we can optimize their function, we can optimize muscle uh, fascia function. We, we can do a lot of things based on this sensory motor cortex com communication, because whatever we touch on the skin with the tape is going to alter the motor output because there are many connections in the spinal cord and the brain. And we know, we know that, I mean, also with other um, manual techniques and even the pads, they are based on a similar mechanism because when you're, you're having the horse that's standing on the pads, you're altering uh, his proprioception. I mean, you are giving him some proprioceptive inputs and these proprioceptive inputs are going to modify the type of motor output. And this is part of how the pads, the tapes, uh, the manipulations and mobilization work. And then there's an important aspect that is related to pain modulation. So we have two different actions that we can achieve with the tape. One is what we call a direct action that is working through what we call the pain gate mechanism. So the pain gate mechanism is a mechanism from which by stimulating some receptors, we are kind of shortcutting the transmission of pain. And so this is going to have an immediate pain relief effect. And then there is a second mechanism that is indirect, that takes longer to onset, but it usually also lasts longer compared to the pain gate mechanism. And that it's based on what we call the endogenous opiate system. So this is a system that is within the brain where based on some type of stimulations, we are uh, promoting the release of the um, endogenous opiate. So it's like, uh, it's a sort of, um, I would say pain killing endogenous molecules. So like when we take um, painkillers, so these are exogenous mo molecules, and then the body has its own uh, analgesic system that is what is used to kind of deal with um, even chronic pain, right? So we are able to stimulate it takes longer, but then it, it stays on longer. And then we have some um, direct effects that are directly connected to the fact that when we apply the tape, we are creating space between the, the um, tissues, like here with the convolutions. And this is reducing, for example, the pressure on the receptors that we have when we have an edema. Uh, even the reduction in range of motion can be painful because if a joint does not move through its full range of motion, it starts to lose part of its um, integrity and then it becomes painful. This is one of the proposed mechanisms in the development of degenerative, the degenerative joint disease. Mm. Reduction of range of motion promotes and furthers the development of a joint issue. So actually taping is really very broad in its capacity to interfere with very different mechanisms and very different physiological systems in the body. But let's see it a little bit more in deep, maybe. Okay. So what can we use it for? We can use it for a lot of things. And I would say tape can be used 
uh, for anything that can be treated with the hands, it can also be treated with the tape. And we know that we can treat a lot of things with hands. Uh, we actually can treat pathological conditions that affect muscles, tendons, ligaments, and fascia joints, lymphatic system, it's very useful, and neurological system. We can address postural imbalances, so horses that are a little bit offset, we can help them get back into their uh, appropriate shape and uh, functional movement. We can treat what we call the pathological movement patterns. So the pathological movement patterns are those movement patterns that remain even after the painful cause is resolved. For example, a horse has pain in his foot for a long time, a very long time. So he will start to do shorter strides and the fascia of all the leg and the shoulder and part of the back is going to remodel in such a way that this new movement pattern with the shortened, shortened stride is going to become the normal way of movement. But it's not normal, it's pathological. So even when the foot pain has been resolved, the fascia is going to keep that pathological movement pattern because it has rearranged in such a way that it's not permitting the physiological movement. With the tape, we can address that type of problems and bring the horse back to a physiological movement pattern. We can use it in regular training as a help, uh, as an optimization of muscle function, or we can use it in a rehab setting uh, for horses that need different type of things. We are going to see a few of them later. Obviously, the best use of tape is always when it's combined with other modalities or manual therapies. It, it was not really designed since the very beginning as a standalone therapy, but still it can be. Uh, I find it much more effective when I combine it with something else, whether it can be the laser or a manual treatment. Uh, it can be used to prepare some manual treatments because sometimes we have horses, for example, I had that, um, that have so much pain in their back and so much muscle tension and spasm that there's no way that you can adjust their joints, their vertebral joints. So sometimes applying the tape and then coming back like the day after is going to help release the tension in the muscles and it allows you to do your manual treatment. The most important thing with taping is that the functional assessment, so the real assessment of what the problem is, how it works, is the key to success. Because there is no way that you are going to have a successful taping application if you are not getting to the right spot. So, when we talk about taping the muscles, we have two options, what we call facilitation and what we call inhibition. So now picking up which one is the right one to use, it's the big question. And this is where the functional assessment is really not only important, it's uh, the, the base for everything. So for example, we can use the facilitation option when we have a disuse atrophy, like a horse that might have, for example, an SI joint issue. We know that in those cases, most of the horses develop an atrophy of the middle glute and the gluteal part of the biceps femoris. And uh, with the tape, we can help retraining those, mus those muscles, kind of waking up their motor control again because most of the time they shut down. So disuse atrophy is probably the main use for facilitation. Combination of facilitation and inhibition can be used to treat the agonist and antagonist imbalances. Most of the time, I would say the rule can be that when we have a muscle weakness, we facilitate. When we have a muscle contractor, we inhibit but it's not always the case. And this is where, again, the assessment is the base of everything. 
when we talk about tendon and ligaments, we can treat almost every type of condition from acute to chronic. The only thing is sometimes some types of um, applications are not suitable to be used in acute conditions. And in particular, uh, we do not want to use applications that might compress the tissues like those two ones that you have here in the bottom, the yellow and the green one. We do not want to compress tissues that are inflamed, uh, swollen. The good thing, the good thing of using taping in uh, tendons and ligaments injuries is that we are addressing a lot of uh, situations that are connected to tendon and ligament injuries. So we can address inflammation and edema, like for example, in this first picture here, we are giving a proprioceptive input and we are retraining part of the fine tuning, fine, fine control of the joints movement. We can work on fibrosis and the elasticity of the tendon or ligament. We know that one of the biggest problems with tendon injuries is that most of the time, uh, because the tissues are not able to repair, but only to create a scar. I mean, the only tissue in the whole body that recreates itself identical to the original one that was existing before of, before a lesion is the bone. That's the only one. All the other tissues are healing with a scar. Whether it's a muscle, the liver, the skin, we are having a scar. This scar is a connective tissues, tissue that is less elastic compared to the original one. And this is particularly important in tendons because most of the time when we have a high re-injury rate, it's because we do not have a good quality in the healing tissue, in the healed tendon that is not elastic enough. And so being able to work on the elasticity is really good. We can work also to relieve the compensatory loads on the other structures. Like if we have an injury to a superficial deep digital flexor tendon, we might have an overload on the deep digital flexor tendon so we can rebalance this overload. It can be an overload that goes from one leg to the other, like the injured leg is unloaded and so there's going to be an overload on the contralateral, contralateral limb, sorry. We can support the affected tissue during the whole rehab phase. We know that the rehab phase of tendon and ligaments is very delicate. So we need to have a good, um, a good plan in order not to have re-injuries. And we can also work on what's called the compartment syndrome. It's something that is now being accredited as the cause of the um, uh, high suspensory dysmitis in the hind limbs in most of the sport horses. But that's a whole another chapter. How do you define compartment syndrome? Well, actually, the compartment syndrome is a painful syndrome that is related to the fact that there's a, a part of the body, in this case, for example, the uh, high suspensory area that um, lacks of space for the movement of the tissues. Okay. Uh, in humans, so that's the chronic compartment syndrome. In humans, there's a description of acute compartment syndrome that is a life-threatening condition that happens, uh, for example, when uh, like the, there's uh, blood and uh, lymph stagnation in, in an arm, for example, and it is compressing the blood vessels and, um, and the nerves. And so you are kind of get, getting to the necrosis of the, of the whole system, right? So, and they treat it with fasciotomy. It happens a lot of time in um, people that get um, very extensive burns. Oh, yeah. So the scars from the burns are very tight. And, uh, and that's why they take them off, but they are also compressing most, mostly the, uh, I would say, neurovascular portion. Uh, 
So if there's no blood supply, there's no life for the tissues. So they go into necrosis. And, um, and if there is no nerve supply and nerve compression is very painful. So what happens most of the time in um, high suspensories in the hind limbs, there's not a lot of space and it's mostly the hind limbs. It doesn't ha happen in the um, forelimbs. So in the hind limbs, what happens is because of the anatomy of the hawk that we see here, there's no way that the, that the um, suspensory can have more space and, there, and it's the suspensory itself because of its fibrosis that compresses the nerve that goes in between the cannon bone and the suspensory itself. So it's a, it's a bit of a difficult thing to explain it without having images, but think about you have the cannon bone, you have the nerve and you have the suspensory. When the suspensory is chronically inflamed, it, it becomes bigger. And because it cannot go to the outside, I would say, because of the, of the soft tissues that keeps them, keeps, keep it in, then it's compressing the nerve and that's painful. And actually one of the new, newest surgical approaches to the um, high suspensory dysmitis in the hind limbs is what they call a fasciotomy, which means that they just cut and open up the fascia so that it creates the space and it reduces the nerve compression. And most of the time, they also do a neurectomy partial that kind of relieves a little bit of the pain. Okay. But it's very, very effective. Um, we have a question whether or not uh, taping would be useful for a horse that's that has weakness due to EPM. Absolutely, yes. Okay. But you have to... Well, actually, we are going to see it in the next slides, but the only thing you have to be careful with EPM is that they have an impaired sensory system, not only motor, but also sensory system. And, uh, and so they might react in a weird way to taping. So you, in neurological cases, you always have to be very careful and be sure that uh, the tape is applied by really well-trained people. That, that's very important. And then someone else is asking whether or not it would help increase elasticity for a club foot. Oh, you might try. You can tape the, um, the hoof. Uh, it, it, can try, it can work by taping the coronet band and, uh, and the hoof itself. I've never tried it personally. So, uh, so yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm just okay. Uh, I was looking at the chat while you were talking. Okay. Let's go ahead. So joints. That's we know that um, I would say eighty, almost eighty percent of the losses in sport horses is related to joint problems and mainly osteoarthritis. So that's really the bad thing for them. Uh, even tendon injuries are not that um, that high. I mean, they, they come second to joints. Uh, probably just in racehorses, we have in thoroughbred racehorses, we have we have more tendon than joints. But all the, I if we take the whole population of equines, sport horses, uh, osteoarthritis is the main cause of loss. Um, in, in, the, in the sport horse industry. Actually, taping can be very helpful uh, through two different actions. One direct action that is directly acting on the joint structures by creating space, reducing uh, uh, inflammation and swelling, <clears throat> and with an indirect action that is mainly related to the action of muscles on the joint. So we know that one of the first causes of joint issues is the loss of alignment in between the two bone endings. This makes the joint work not in a proper way and it uh, triggers um, a cascade of events that brings 
and at the end to osteoarthritis. And the reduction in joint range of motion in, is also involved in that. So here you see a few applications for joints that are um, that have the um, goal of on one side, um, I would say helping in reducing the eventual joint swelling that we might have. And on the other side, it's um, giving stability to the joint itself through the proprioceptive feedback. So joints have a lot of proprioceptors in the joint capsule, in the, in the, joint, in the joint capsule, in the joint ligaments, and in the muscle spindles that are close to the muscle insertions around the joint. So there's a lot of proprioception in and around the joints. And through the taping, we are really helping what we call the joint sensor, uh, sorry, we are really helping the horse to figure out the position of the joint. So the joint sense of position is one of the most important things when we are trying to, I would say, uh, not rewind the osteoarthritis process because once the cartilage is damaged, we cannot do anything, but at least prevent it from becoming worse. Next one, okay, fascia. As I told you, um, fascia is a very important uh, tissue because it adapts to any change in the movement pattern, in the posture. Uh, and so it's very important to be able to assess, first of all, these changes in the fascia position and uh, texture. And um, I would say, uh, I do not get the word right now. Um, let, let's say stiffness, which is not the right word, but I cannot find the right one now. Uh, so what can tape do? Once you have assessed where your fascia misses movement or is too, uh, contracted or is to, I cannot really find that word. <laughs> it's just not coming. Uh, restricted, here it is. So, yeah, sorry. Right. So one, once you find out where your movement restriction is, then using the recoil of the tape, so it's elasticity, you can unwind the fascia and promote the realignment because actually the tape is able to interact with the um, collagen cross-linking that keep that patency of the fascia. And so it's good when the fascia is in its physiological condition, but it's really bad when the fascia has adapted to a pathological condition. So with the tape, it kind of works in a similar way that the myofascial release work does by just unbridging this collagen cross-linking, and then facilitating the realignment of the fibers towards the physiological movement. Okay, so that's about, it comes to that EPM question. Um, ideally, we are trying to promote um, the restoration or the maintenance of the most correct uh, posture, balance, and movement. <clears throat> and so we need to target, like for example, the big picture here on the left, it's something that might work for all those horses that because of neurological condition, lose a little bit the sense of position of their pelvis. So this is a neurological case that I have been treating at the, if it goes, oops, no, no. Okay, it's not very nice to see like this. No, but you can see how compromised the horse is. <laughs> Let me see, if I turn it like this, it might be, 
<laughs> that it's going to go to the right side. Let's see if it works. No, not really. Well, but we can still see how. Okay, you actually, this was a thoroughbred that has that had um, collision injury and developed the brachial plexus. Okay, it's really funny like this. Yeah. <laughs> developed the brachial plexus. Um, how do you call that? Um, a brachial plexus injury, right? Yeah. So you can guess. So you see how much his shoulder is going to the outside because it's unstable. <laughs> and obviously, <laughs> but you can see the difference with the tape on. So you can really see that the, this shoulder is moving much less to the side. Actually, that horse recovered well. He raced. Uh, wow. But, oh, he was really bad. I, I do not have here the, the video. I might try to find it. I think I have it somewhere in my computer. I can try to show it that to you later um, of how he got into the hospital. He was totally non-bearing weight. They suspected a humeral fracture. And um, that was really good. So if we think about proprioception and neuromotor control, and now we are getting to the combination with the pads, what we do with taping is we are optimizing muscle function. We are working on fascia and especially in the, on the restrictions. We are working on tendon and ligaments, especially for what is elasticity and fibrosis prevention. And obviously through the, I would say, restoration of the proprioception because we lose a lot of proprioceptors with um, tendon and ligament injuries. And when we are thinking about joints, we are working on the alignment main, mainly and on the stability. Actually the pads, give a huge proprioceptive input to horses. They help us in whatever situation where we need to work on muscle strength and core stability. And they are really helpful on myofascial tensions. And I think that myofascial tensions is the greatest thing where pads work. My personal experience with pads now since a few, oh, we can say three years now, because yeah. that's a lot. I mean, it just went so fast. <laughs> and I love to see how the horses stand on the pads and start to kind of adjust themselves. That's just amazing. It's unbelievable. Um, not obviously adjusting the joints, but they are feeling better their position and they are kind of remodeling their fascia to release the tensions. And that's great. So the combination, is it a synergy or is it an overload? Because that's important too. So that's an interesting case that I've been doing a few years ago uh, where I combined taping and pads. So that, that mare had um, an injury to the um, deep digital flexor tendon in the insertion um, in the foot, right? So that's already a bad injury. And she had a lot of restriction in the fetlock extension. And so with the owner, we decided to try whatever we could. And one day I just said, you know what? I'm just going to try with the tape and pads and see what happens. And I wanted to have an objective measurement of what was happening in her fetlock extension. So I used the goniometer, I fixed it, I mean, to the center of rotation of the joint. So we have the joint rim here, and I measured the angle of the joint extension when the horse was just standing by herself. So you can see that she was kind of not really extending the fetlock. And then I did the same measurement of goniometry on the other foot to use it as a control. And then I applied the tape and then I put the horse on the pads and I, she liked a lot the slant pads, the firm slant, because probably she was able like this to kind of relieve a little bit of her 
tension in the flexor muscles. And um, I remeasured that same angle of joint extension after maybe 15 minutes. So it was amazing. The left front fetlock had gained six degrees of extension. Whereas with the combination of the tape and the pads, whereas the right fetlock that was, I mean, I would say less injured, but in any case, it wasn't perfect though, um, had only gained two degrees of extension. So actually the combination of the pads and the taping was a synergy without overload. Wow. What, what's the name of the tool that you use to measure the angle? It's a goniometer. Can you spell that? <laughs> yeah, it's G-O-N-I-O-M-E-T-E-R. Okay. I became very good at spelling in English also. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah and it is actually the only um, measurement tool that is considered repeatable and um, objective for joint angles okay. so if you want to measure changes in joint flexion extension blah 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 I mean, without having very expensive high speed camera stuff and things like that, this is the thing that is the more reliable. It is very important to use the right anatomical landmarks because the center of the goniometer here has to be exactly in correspondence to the, to the joint rim, okay? Because otherwise it's obviously not corresponding to, the, to that joint flexion. It's, doing some other movement. So, okay, we finished for the information. For those of you that might want to learn more about taping, uh, I am teaching a certification program that is only open to licensed professional, obviously, meaning vets, PTs with animal training, um, massage therapists need to fulfill some higher standard requirements. Uh, for those that cannot attend the certification program, the good news is that it's coming soon. There's going to be, um, I would say two hours uh, online lecture with practical tips and, and things where you can learn, I would say the safe applications for your horses. Those that might not cause um, harm in case it's not applied correctly. All of this is available uh, on the Animal Rehab Institute website that you can see here. You obviously not can, but have to go on our Facebook page and put a big like. <laughs> and then in case you need to contact me, this is my email. I try to respond within 24 hours. Uh, if it takes longer, either it's gone in the spam or I, I'm just too busy. So it probably can take 48 hours. But if you have any particular inquiries, you can write me an email. Okay. So do you have questions now? Um, yeah, we let's see. We so have a lot. One question here. Do you have to clip the horse in order for the tape to stick? Uh, okay, let me go back. I need to read the question. Can goniometer, blah, blah. Uh, not necessarily. Um, I mean, tape is actually working through the stimulation of the hair follicle too. So long hairs are not a big problem. Some type of applications might need the horse to be clipped, but because of the type of stimulation that you need to give. Um, so, so yeah. And someone's asking what brand of tape you recommend. Uh, well, actually, I like very much. I mean, I have been developing Kinesio Equine myself with Dr. Kaze, which I like a lot. Uh, I have recently discovered that one of my uh, first students, 
She took the taping course in 2013. Uh, Chris Tavino, she has just developed an equine tape that I like very much. Uh, and these are actually the two brands of tape that I'm using. And I noticed uh, in some of your pictures that there's a lot of different patterns. So some of the tapes come pre, pre-cut. No, no, no pre-cuts. You have to cut them yourself. Okay. So those fans and those interesting um, patterns you had around the fetlock joints, you've, you've cut all those tapes. To yeah, the you cut them, you cut them yourself. And there's a, it's very, so the reason why um, taping is not something that can be, I would say, in some sort of applications, you need to have a lot of knowledge of anatomy and physiology, and also a little bit of pathology to make sure that you're not applying the tape in a way that it's not appropriate and in conditions that are not appropriate. Because many people think that it's just a piece of tape, but it's actually not. It can be harmful. If it's not applied correctly, it can be harmful. And I have seen horses myself that were having problems after taping. So I'm just seeing, so lymphangitis, for example, is one of those conditions that Ha can be treated, but you have to make sure that you have no infection. I mean, it, it has to be done under strict medical control. So you can tape for lymphangitis, but it has to be done in a certain way. So, so I think that um, what are certain things that the lay person should not try to take? <laughs> uh, whenever you have a lameness, do not try to tape it. Because you can address the lameness with taping, but actually you can make it worse. Okay. Um, never tape when there's an infection. I would say whenever you would seek your vet advice, just do not try to tape it before having your vet check it. And um, so the flip side of that is what are some of the things that the lay person could safely? I know you're going to cover it in your course, but it's just in terms of topics. Um, uh, well, actually, uh, for example, thoracolumbar fascia restrictions, all of those, what we call cold backed horses, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the time, those horses that have, obviously, if it's a bad back pain, no, but all those horses that are a little bit restricted in their back movement, they have a little bit of back pain, um, there's a taping that you can use for back, for I would say thoracolumbar fascia, that is uh, really good in relieving those uh, fascial restrictions. And it is safe because in any case, if there's something worse than just a little fascia restriction, it's not going to work. Okay. So it works on that light pain. I'm actually running a research project on that um, where I'm doing pressure algometry to evaluate the pain perception and I'm taping the back. So it's horses that are completely sound and they only have this restriction in back mobility that is related to, um, to a fascia restriction. And I'm actually having really interesting results because the, 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 the tape is actually working within 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, on racehorses. Um, and, and it still has an effect that works. I mean, I'm applying the tape, remeasuring at 24 hours, and then doing it again after a while, and it's still working even after you took it off. Wow. And this was already demonstrated in humans with um, efficacy lasting up to 48 hours and in some cases up to 10 days. Wow. Because it is, especially when you have those problems that are related to posture, it is rebalancing everything. And so you're removing, you're just removing the cause of the problem. Right. So human tape can be used. Yeah, obviously, but it's not really sticking really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the equine tape, the equine tape, 
should not be used on humans because the, the adhesive, the glue is way stronger. Um, that's the opposite of the problem. If you use human tape, most of the time, the glue is not going to be strong enough to stay on. If it depends what you are taping, some, some applications might stay on. I can tell you if you are taping like big, huge, high movement areas, it's not going to stay. It's not. Going what to about stay. sweat? I know that um, sweat can affect the length of time a tape sticks, but I would assume with the horse tape that that's been a, the higher adhesive probably helps. I, I just took the screen sharing off. Like, uh, well, actually sweat is a problem. Uh, it is less when you're using equine tapes, uh, but still, if you have horses, like that's my main major problem when I have um, horses that are in work, in full work, and I want to address something or I want to check it from a functional standpoint, like I had, um, I have horses that might have um, quadriceps dysfunction, and I want to see how much the tape changes when they're working. I applied, but most of the time at the end of the very strong work where they were, where they have been sweating a lot, it comes off. Yeah. So you just reapply it. But it, it's it can be a problem in um, places like Florida in the summer, where it's very humid, the horses sweat a lot, it, it might come off. Most of the time, it's not really, it's independent of, of on the brand of tape. It is dependent on the single individual. Mm. I have had horses, same application. Some horses lose it, some horses do not. I have no idea why. Yeah. Some horses, they, ha they have the tape that stays on forever. You, you even struggle to take it off. Some horses, it's gone after 24 hours. Same so application, it, it's me applying it. It's the same tape, even the same roll of tape. It, I think it is related to the grease in the skin, mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the hairs, to the, just, and uh, I was talking about that with a human physio and she was telling me she has the exact same thing in humans. Oh, wow. So it's really something that is related to the skin and the skin is really the individual. Wow, that's, that's fascinating that you see the same kinds of things in the humans um, yeah. since we don't it have might be, <laughs> It might be what you what you eat even. I mean, it goes through yeah. the skin. It goes right, out. absolutely. But, but that's yeah. really fascinating um, that it can be that different. And um, uh, Okay, so it's interesting because Nikki says she has the same experience with humans and horses. Ah. Yeah. Yep. So it's definitely something that is related to the single individual. Because I can tell you, just last week, I taped two horses for the SI joint with the same roll of tape in the same stable, and they're doing the same work. I went today, one was off, one was on. And when you check these horses, do you find a change in the fascia on the horse where it came up? In other words, has it done its job? Yeah, it has done its job most of the time. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering it, if it's that... just something. It's just something that is sometimes difficult to explain to the horse owners. Yes. <laughs> because hey, I want the tape to stay on, especially when they pay for it. But uh, I mean, sometimes it just comes off when it has done its job. Well, and that's that's so similar to with pads. You know, some horses will stay on them for an hour, and other horses it's two minutes. And you know. Um, it's a, either that or a poltergeist, somebody's saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, I, but I think that that's where we have to be so, uh, uh, recognizing that each individual is so different in terms of what they need, how it's going to work, um, the effectiveness. And you don't know until you do it. I mean, you don't yeah, know exactly. until you actually put the tape on whether or not <clears throat> it's going to come on. And interestingly, when the horses are, for example, very tight in the fascia, the tape tends to come off earlier. Oh. And same horses that might need other treatments, the tape start to stay on longer 
while the fascia releases. Interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's really now, interesting. I, I'm trying to demonstrate everything. It, it's probably going to take me the rest of my life. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's captured your attention because these kind of things are really fascinating. I love the fact that you were able to measure the change in the joints in that in angles in that horse where you taped and used sure foot pads. Um, I, I think that's a, such an elegant and simple way to show a change. Um, and this whole idea of the skin changing, you know, my, my, the guy who makes my saddles, his name is Andy Foster, he's in the UK, and he's the only saddle maker I've ever heard talk about considering the thickness of the leather he uses on the panels of the saddle in relation to the thickness of the horse's skin. Wow, so, that's really interesting. Isn't that interesting? And so, you know, he he takes that into consideration when he's making a saddle for a particular horse because some horses have thicker skin, some have thinner. And um, oh. I've never heard any other saddler talk about that. But in the same way, it's like when we're looking at fashion, we're looking at skin, different, you know, different thicknesses, different mobilities, uh, different restrictions. Yeah, for sure. Because actually the tape has a, a, a thickness that is comparable to the, I would say, average thickness of the skin. Oh. But for sure, you might have horses that have thicker skin and it might stay on longer, lo less, who knows? Yeah, yeah. and that, I don't that, know that there's any way to, point. to measure mm -hmm. the thick. And also, you know, I mean, you see big difference in hair coats too, um, but it's, it's, this is all really, really fascinating. So, um, we're, we're almost out of time, but I would love to, what is the, the most astounding thing you've seen happen using tape? Like what, what's the case that sticks in your mind the most vividly? Oh, it's the one that I should have filmed <laughs> and that I never filmed. I mean, I had more than one similar situation. And every time I said, oh, I should have filmed that. And I always forget. So in, it was a certain number of cases uh, where I had that movement restriction that was related to a muscular dysfunction. So a muscle that was not working properly. So the horses were actually lame, right? Mm -hmm. And I taped it, waited for 15 minutes and the horse was perfectly sound. Wow. So I said, oh, I have to take the tape off and film it. And the problem is it was never back to lameness. Right. It was right. just, and <clears throat> that gave me the idea that sometimes <clears throat> some uh, pathological movement pattern are just kept on going because the muscles shut down. And we know that neuromotor control can shut down. And it happens a lot with quadriceps when you have stifle injuries. Oh, <clears throat> sure, yeah. And it looks like, I mean, and what I, I thought was happening is that the tape just of kind wake up. It kind of switched the light on again to that muscle and it just came back to work. Wow. That's, and, that's yeah. really fascinating. And obviously I do not have any videos about it. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, I've, the, those circumstances where you never planned a video and then something dramatic happens and then later you're like oh well but I think those sometimes they're not meant to be filmed I think they're just uh, meant to be experienced yeah exactly I mean I have filming of a lot of things but when it is so much I mean it's really impressive I, I do not I, those are I, I have two cases that were really from lameness to great lame to perfect soundness in 15 minutes wow it, yeah. it makes you realize that there's there's a lot we don't know and don't understand in terms of the whole biological system, but how amazing it is, you know, yeah. I, that you keep coming. And I mean, <clears throat> it happens with pads too. You might yeah. have horses that are completely crooked. You let them stand on the pads, they get off and they're perfectly straight. Yeah. And this is what fascinates me about the pads. What I was telling you, they kind of figure out what, is wrong with their balance and they just adjust adjust it by themselves. Yeah. Their ability it's kind to of a reprogramming. Yeah. yeah. It it is fascinating. It's what one of the things that keeps me going on all of this. Well, Sybil, so, this has been a fantastic webinar. I want to thank you so much for, for taking the time to join me. And I just love 
listening to you and and what you're doing at the taping and um that's great that you're coming up with a person a course for lay people because i think it's a really great idea yeah i mean it's just going to be online and uh, it it just takes time because i want to make very good videos on showing how to apply the tape and all of that but yeah it's going to come and uh, i'll tell you so you are going to share yeah. everything also on the shortfoot pad um page yep yep we'll we'll put it out there so thank you so much for joining me and thank you everybody for tuning in just remember you can find this and all the other webinars on the surefoot ecoin youtube channel and we'll be back tomorrow with a webinar on how to do case studies for your surefoot practitioner uh, process so thanks for joining us and we'll see you later and have a great day bye